Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news about programs and services provided by the departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The city welcomed both the new year and new technology by saying goodbye to its 18-year-old legacy mainframe. This mainframe at one time housed all of the city's 50-plus computer applications and processes. That includes revenue, payroll, and permitting. By moving off the mainframe, all of the city's applications will now be on modern servers. This is really an end of an era now. End of an era. The Parks and Recreation Department has named David Burke as the Supervisor of the Year. Burke is the Central District Superintendent for the Department's Natural Resources Division. He oversees 53 employees along with the maintenance and upkeep of 91 parks and more than 2,600 acres of parkland in Kansas City. For exemplary skills in communication, creative work, quality, safety, and morale, Again, uh, this would be the Adrian Malone Supervisor of the Year goes to David Burke. Congratulations, David. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with the Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation Department here to tell you about some exciting news and events happening at your local city parks and facilities. Make 2014 your best year ever with a new healthy habit, joining one of our 10 Kansas City Community Centers. Now through January 31st, Parks and Rec is offering residents an annual All Access Pass, valid at all of the city's community centers for only $200. Passes include access to facilities, fitness centers, pools, and select classes. Residents may also opt to purchase a monthly pass for $25, valid at the center of their choice. Purchase a pass at any of the city's community centers. Learn more by visiting kcparks.org and clicking Centers. The Brush Creek Community Center is hosting a Martin Luther King Jr. Youth Basketball Tournament January 17th through the 19th for youth ages 8 to 15. We're looking for the best basketball teams in the Midwest to play in this competitive tournament. Teams must register by January 10th. Tournament divisions include 10 and under, 12 and under, and 15 and under. Team uniforms must be alike in color with a number on the front or back. For more information, call 816-513-0730. Phase 2 of Swope Park Soccer Village's $13.44 million expansion has begun. This project will build five new synthetic soccer fields this year at 63rd Street and Lewis Road in Swope Park. When completed, the Swope Park Soccer Village will be home to nine full-size soccer fields and facilities, including new restrooms, concession stands, and storage amenities. Swope Soccer Village will host NCAA Men's and Women's Soccer Championship tournaments through 2017. To learn more about these or other events Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation has to offer, visit kcparks.org or give us a call at 816-513-7500. When KCPD recruits graduate from the police academy, they are ready for patrol, right? Well, not exactly. They begin patrolling with a field training officer, and the FTO is responsible for another 10 weeks of training. One of the popular FTOs is Sebastian Hanriot. I've been an FTO now for four years. Um, I've had about 14 new officers that I train. When they come to us, most of the time, they don't know how to get into a patrol car. Uh, they don't know how to uh, check the video or drive a light and siren, answer a call, talk to the victim, suspect. They have an idea on take a report. By the time the end of breaking, they have what we call a solo status, which means they can be a police officer on their own on the street. They have to apply on the street what they learn in the academy. And that's our job to make sure they do it and they do it well. Today was a good day when you have a recruit and they are actually applying what you're trying to teach them and they can do it on their own without any assistance or help or any critique. That's a good day for us. 
What does recruit Wayne Lewis think of the training? I'll say Hannah has been a great FTO, been very professional, he's been a great trainer. I think an FTO that's really good at what he's doing will keep an officer safe <clears throat> and will teach him the skills that he needs to uh, survive on a day-to-day -day basis. He's a great pastry chef from what I hear. Can't wait to try some of his stuff out. Sebastian Sergeant Mike Glass. Generally a good FTO is an officer who has a lot of patience, um, uh, good knowledge of department policies and procedures, uh, very good knowledge of the way things are done out in the street and in the field. Um, and the ability to teach another adult and to be a leader and a mentor. Sebastian is a very good FTO. I think the reason why people like him is because he has patience and he listens and he also treats people um, you know, with respect. He treats his recruits with respect and he generally cares about them and wants them to succeed. Recruits ride with two different FTOs as a probationary officer. After 30 weeks as a recruit, 10 more weeks as a probationary officer, our officers are ready to begin serving the citizens of Kansas City. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. My name is Kevin LaPointe. I'm the City Forester for the City of Kansas City, Missouri, the Parks and Recreation Department Forestry Division. And we're out here today on this uh, beautiful sunny day to talk about the Emerald Ash Borer. The Emerald Ash Borer was found in Kansas City in August of 2012, 2012. And this last year, its uh, population has been growing and spreading. We first found it in Platte County, which is where we are today. This beetle is an invasive beetle that has destroyed millions of trees in the country, has no natural enemies, and is spread throughout the country. We're going to try to manage this beetle to slow it down as best we can, preserve a number of our ash trees, and transition over the next 10 to 15 years by removing some ash trees, treating some ash trees to preserve them for a period of time, and most importantly that we plant new trees now of different species because we're going to lose a number of our trees, a number of these ash trees over time. Again, the city of Kansas City, Missouri has taken some steps to help uh, the city and its citizens and the public to work through this transitional period. We've set up dump sites throughout the city. We have one in the Northland at North Cookingham in Maine, one at Doremus just south of the river, and one at Raytown in 470 uh, down in the south part of the city. At this point in time, the Emerald Ash Borer has become such a problem that the USDA and the state of Missouri have quarantined the entire state of Missouri. So that the emerald ash borer has been found in a number of places and it's spreading. So what have we done? We set up these dump sites for citizens to be able to take your material. We've treated the trees that we were able to treat. And here's a great example here in front of me. This tree is probably about 16 or 17 inches in diameter. It is a white ash tree. The tree has been treated and we've tagged each tree that we've treated with a small round metal tag which you'll see if you live in a residential, residential area or on the parkways, any tree that we've tr uh, treated has been tagged with this round metal tag. The other way you can tell it's been treated is down below in the main trunk of the tree, you'll see if you look closely, there's injection ports where we have drilled a small hole, put in a plug, and then with a high uh, pressure needle and uh, air pressure have injected the chemical that's needed into this port. That holds the chemical in there. During the springtime is when we treat, once the trees uh, put out their leaves and they start drawing the moisture and the nutrients and things up from the root system up into the stem of the tree. So once they're foliated, we can put the injections in there and it takes the chemical up into the tree and protects that tree for the next three years. As part of our program to manage the emerald ash borer, we've talked about trees that we've treated. We also have taken trees that we couldn't treat and we've stressed them, what we call created a trap tree. The purpose of a trap tree is to help us survey and monitor both the spread and the population levels of the emerald ash borer. So what we've done through the three county area, Platte, Clay, and Jackson counties, is we've taken some of those trees that we weren't able to treat for various reasons, and we've created a trap tree. A trap tree is a tree that we've taken some of the bark off the trunk of the tree so that the tree will send out chemical signals 
for the beetle and attract the beetles to it. It's found to be a way when the beetle populations are low to find out if the beetle's in the area. So we have randomly taken these trees in all three counties and stressed some of these trees to create a trap tree and attract the beetle to them. This tree that we created a trap tree is a great example. Here you can see some old damage where the emerald ash borer had laid some eggs, the larvae had gone in and burrowed underneath the bark, destroying that tissue between the bark and the woody tissue, and then eventually that larvae at the end of the season turned into an adult, burrowed its way out, and left making a small D-shaped hole which you can't no longer see. But in the last few years, you can tell that the tree has tried to wall off this area of damage and it's created this callous tissue around the edge. That tells me that the beetle has been here in Platte County and in this particular tree for the, a few years because it takes a few years for the tree to create this callous tissue around it. So why, why is that important? It tells me that the beetle population in Platte County has been growing for some time and the beetle population eventually hits this exponential curve where the population explodes and hundreds of these and thousands of these ash trees begin to die at the same time. And in Platte County, you need to act now. If you want to preserve your ash trees, you need to do that now. Between now and this May, when the trees are putting out their leaves and they begin to draw the nutrients up, those trees need to be treated. Otherwise, they will more than likely be lost even this summer to the emerald ash borer. Do you own rental property in Kansas City, Missouri? If you do, remember to renew or establish registration of your property with the city's Neighborhoods and Housing Services Department. The deadline is January 31st for the year 2014. Annual registration of rental properties is required by city ordinance. Failure to do so will result in a fine. To register, please visit kcmo.org NHS and click Rental Property Registration or you may call 513-9010. Residents may recycle Christmas trees and lighting at city facilities. Christmas trees, you know, the real kind, not the artificial kind, may be recycled at the city's leaf and brush drop-off centers through January 11th. Leaf and brush drop-off centers are located at 1815 North Shoto Traffic Way, 10301 Raytown Road, and 11600 North Main Street. Old holiday lights may be disposed of at the city's three recycling centers through February 15th. The centers are located at 400 Northwest Berry Road, 4707 Doremus Avenue, and 9051 Hillcrest Road. For more information about these services, visit kcmo.org trash. The city's Municipal Art Commission is accepting proposals from artists for two very high-profile projects. The first is the 2014 Avenue of the Arts. That's a temporary public art installation. This project is open to Missouri and Kansas artists who live within 125 miles of Kansas City. The Avenue of the Arts Foundation will commission up to eight artists to create site-specific artworks. The art will be placed on Central Avenue in downtown Kansas City from June through October of 2014. Proposals are due January 10th. For the second project, your art would be a permanent part of Kansas City's downtown streetcar project. Artists are asked to develop aesthetic elements to enhance stops along the streetcar line. Proposals for this project are due January 27th. For more information, including RFQs for both projects, visit kcmo.org art. For more information about any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org, scroll down to the bottom right-hand corner, and click on the weekly report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week and a successful 2014.